Amazon return 3D printers. Are they worth the massive discounts, or are you better off sticking with new? We'll find out on today's Crimson Technology. Now, if you don't know what return 3D printers are, let's say someone orders a printer from Amazon, but they didn't like it or couldn't get it to work out of the box, so they decide to return it to Amazon for a refund. Amazon takes that return and either sends it back to the manufacturer or they send it to auction. A lot of manufacturers will accept the returns and then turn around and sell the return 3D printers for steep discounts. The problem is, they usually don't bother checking the boxes out before selling them, so you never know what you're getting or what condition it's in. I've heard stories of people getting printers that are missing half their parts and are basically worthless, or printers that were supposed to be an 8K resin printer that ended up just having the body of the 8K model, and all the internal parts were swapped out with a 4-year-old model. That said, this time of year is a great time to check out return printers, since it's shortly after the holiday season, and people who got printers as presents often don't know how to use them, so they simply return them. A lot of these printers don't have anything wrong with them, or just very minor things that need fixing, like eccentric nuts being too tight, ribbon cables not plugged in correctly, etc. These two printers I have here I paid $47 each for. These are Focus Odin 5 printers. Now I should mention that this video is not sponsored by Focus and that I paid for these printers with my own money. Now let's open these up and see what we've got for our $47. This first printer came with what looks like about half of the original parts in the accessories box. It did come with all four screws that lock the folding mechanism in place, so I installed those first. When I opened the box, one of the bed leveling wheels fell out, so I'll reinstall that. This ribbon cable was disconnected, and the one corner looks to be damaged, but we'll plug it into test anyways. This printer did come with both of the spare ribbon cables in the box, in case we need to change that out later. Let's plug it in and see if it turns on. It seems to boot up fine so far. Let's test homing all three axes. Now when I attempt to change the hot end temperature, the screen is showing zero degrees. The bed temperature seems fine, so let's see if we can find the problem with the hot end. First I'll go into the settings and try changing the thermistor type, but it still shows zero degrees. So let's try replacing that damaged ribbon cable with the spare one from the accessories box. After swapping that out, it's still reading 0 degrees. Let's change that thermistor type back to the original setting, and it's still reading 0 degrees. I'm assuming at this point that it's a problem with the thermistor, and I notice that there's an error 4 on the top of the screen, which confirms my suspicions. Looking up underneath the hot end, I notice that one of the wires looks to be sitting at a weird angle, so let's rip the hot end apart and see what happened. After disconnecting the board and pulling it loose, I found that the JST male plug came off of the two pins it's supposed to sit on, so I separate the plug and press the male connector back onto the pins and plug it back in. Then I plug the rest of the wires I disconnected back in and put the board back in place. After firing the printer back up, the hot end is now reading the correct temperature and it heats up fine. Now let's make sure the extruder is working so we can print a test print. Trying to load filament, the extruder motor is just clicking and I can't seem to push the filament in further than an inch, so it seems like we have a hot end or extruder clog. Let's tear apart the extruder and see if we can find our clog. 
I see some filament remnants in the gears, but I can't see the clog yet. Let's take it the rest of the way apart. And there's the clog. Okay, let's heat up the hot end so we can hopefully pull that clog out with some tweezers. I remove the spring and roller assembly so I can pull the clog out easier, and then I push some fresh filament through to make sure it's not clogged further down inside the nozzle. Everything looks good, so it's time to put it all back together and heat it up for an extrusion test. I push some filament through the hot end, and out comes some very burnt looking filament. This printer probably went into thermal runaway when the resistor came unattached, and that's the main reason for the return. Then I run through a quick bed leveling process and throw some G-code at it to see if it'll print a calibration cube. I use the default Ender 3 settings in Cura, and I set the printer to print at 170% speed. It looks pretty good for a first print. Now let's move on to the second printer. This one looks to have more of the original accessories included, including a sample spool of filament. Pulling the printer out of the box, I noticed what looks like the broken end of a micro SD card. Let's get the rest of this foam out of the way so we can take a closer look. The glass bed is shifted to one side, so I'll slide that back into place. When sliding the bed forward, I notice that the eccentric nuts for the bed wheels are loose. Let's install the bolts for the folding mechanism first, and then we'll come back to the bed. I also notice the other half of that micro SD card is still inside the printer, so let's pull that out with some tweezers. After plugging in the hot end ribbon cable, and checking that the eccentric nuts are tight enough on the X carriage, Let's move on to the bed carriage. Both of the nuts were loose, but once they were tightened properly, the bed slides back and forth nice and smooth. When trying to heat up the hot end to test the extruder, I noticed that the printer wouldn't allow me to heat over 205 degrees, so I went into the settings and changed the maximum temperature to 250. This still wasn't hot enough, as now it wouldn't let me go over 235 degrees, so I changed the maximum temperature to 300 degrees, and now I could hit the 240 degrees that I was aiming for. I loaded in filament without any problems, and it extruded fine. Then I went through the bed leveling process and stuck in a new SD card. Let's see if it'll print. This calibration cube was printed at 200% speed with otherwise stock Ender 3 settings. So is it worth it to buy return 3D printers? If you know how to fix the problems you might encounter, absolutely. They're an excellent way to save money if you're in the market for a 3D printer and just want something cheap to tinker around with. Just be aware, you might not have the same luck I've had with these two printers, and yours could be missing a lot more parts or be much more broken than these ones were. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.